All right, well, if you brought your Bibles with you, um, open up to James chapter 5. James chapter 5, verse 16 says this, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. How do you get to a place of being a person whose prayers are powerful and effective? Well, I believe it starts in a place of great simplicity, and we're going to get there in just a moment. But it also is a pathway that grows and utilizes the different facets of prayer that God has made available to us. So let's first of all define our core value. We say that we actively practice the many biblical forms and expressions of prayer, recognizing that prayer involves both speaking and listening to the Lord. And we believe that both individual and community prayer is vital and that God delights in answering the prayers of His people. And then there's a whole lot of scriptures that we have given to you to to read if you're uh, one who likes to do a lot of Bible study. Here's a few different passages uh, going from Exodus all the way through to 1 John that can uh, lead you into some deeper study in in the study of prayer. But let's take a look at some of the the things that I have to share with you this morning about prayer. And let's start at the heart of it. Prayer, at the heart of it, is pursuing a friendship with God. I love the verse in Exodus 33, 11 that says, Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face, just as a man speaks to his friend. Think of that. That is awesome. Can you imagine Moses There he was. I mean, people hadn't spoken with God like that since the Garden of Eden. I mean, there was this ability for Moses to speak to God face to face, just like you would your friend. How many of you have a friend here? Some of you don't have a friend. I am so sorry. We can pray for you right now. If you don't mind just standing up. No, I don't want to embarrass you. (laughs) Where are your friends? (laughs) Um, And you get close to your friend, right? You can get up close to your friend's face and you could talk to him. You want to talk about something that you you just want to confide in your friend. You get up close. You don't shout it across the room. And um, I remember as a kid starting out and um, learning a prayer that my mom taught me. And it was a pretty good prayer. You know, so I would get down on the side of my bed at night and, um, you know, I would get on my knees, and I'd close my eyes really tight, and I'd fold my hands really tight. (laughs) Sorry, I'm just, I've always been an intense person, (laughs) just who I am. (laughs) And then I would just pray, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Amen. And I'd climb into bed, you know. And that was my prayer. But you think about it, and you go, what a morbid prayer. (laughs) Oh my gosh, is the Lord some kind of a wraith that sucks up souls in the middle of the night? You know, I'm going to take your soul. You know, no wonder kids don't want to go to bed anymore at night. You know, learning those prayers, holy smokes. No, oh, do you want to go to time for bed, Johnny? I don't want to go to bed. I'm going to die. It's like, wow. But <clears throat> that was just my comedic mind taking over for a moment. I'm back. Well, the beauty of that is that uh, it taught me that I was to have a regular conversation with God. And although as a little kid, um, I did, it wasn't much of a conversation, I, it grew from that point. But I like even better what I observed from my youngest daughter. She was probably, I don't know, uh, it couldn't have been even two years old yet, um, just beginning to form her sentences. And uh, Hannah crawled up into bed with Leslin. And she got right up to her face. She took, her, she took Leslin's face with her, her tiny little hands, you know, and he said, Mommy, let's talk. <laughs> Clearly, she was the social one. <laughs> and she just wanted to talk. And to me, that illustrates beautifully what the heart of prayer really is. It's a heart thing of just wanting to talk with God, heart to heart, face to face. No pretense, no laundry list, no, you know, I'm, I'm bringing, you know, I, I have to pray a certain prayer and make sure it's just right. It's got to sound like so-and-so or whatever. No, it's just 
this, we come in pure simplicity and we just say, God, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I want to talk about. And prayer is also two-way communication. So it's also listening to what is on God's heart. I, I like to say that in this two-way communication, God moves our heart. And we ask Him, we say things like, Lord, what's on your heart today? What is it that you want to accomplish? What is it that you would like to do? And then just giving Him time to show us what that is. And that might come as we're reading the Bible. As, and all of a sudden, something jumps out and it, we just know, wow, that verse really speaks to me. I, I think God is, wants me to do something with that today. Um, to having an impression of, of what God might have in store for you. And we'll get into that more later. But it's that two-way communication where you're expecting that God is going to be communicating to you as you also move the heart of God. And I can't think of a better example of moving the heart of God than um, uh, Abraham in Genesis chapter 18 where he intercedes for Sodom and Gomorrah. And you know that perhaps you know the story where he, he um, actually starts bartering with God. I mean, the audacity of this man is awesome. I just love it. He's actually bartering with God saying, well, if I could find 50 people who are righteous, will you promise not to destroy it? All right, Abraham, you know, hey, hey God. He's like, I got him now. I'm on a roll. I'm not going to stop. Hey, God, how about 40? You know, if I get a 40, just 40, you know, will you spare it? All right, Abraham, 40, you know. Oi, vey, you know. <laughs> and he goes, he breaks all the way down to two, two. If I could just find two, will you spare it? He's bartering with God. He's moving the heart of God. And I think sometimes God loves that we do that with him because he wants us involved in the process. Um, in, it, one of the things that I think is so important to understand about prayer, and I'm, um, Elaine, don't worry about going there on the overhead, all right? But all the way at the end, I talk about what prayer is not. But let me just talk about now what prayer is not. Prayer is not just being, um, is not a fatalistic attempt of, you know, we're just, okay, whatever God, whatever your will is, God. Now, there is a point of where you need to surrender our will to Him, but that is our old nature. We've been given a new nature where we should be dreaming with God and contending for things with God, promises that God has given to us. So prayer is not just some kind of... Um, uh, submitting to the fate of, of God, neither is it um, that we're initiating the action or, or feeling like we somehow we have to manipulate this um, reluctant God to do something. But prayer is finishing what Jesus said. On the cross, he said, it is finished. And it's a call to you and me to pick up what Jesus has finished and begin to pray that those things that he finished would be enforced and realized in the world that you and I live in. So it is a partnering with God. And so when you look at prayer, the very first point is that it's a friend, pursuing a friendship with God. It's that two-way communication where you're bringing to him those things that are on your heart. Those things that concern you because they matter to him too because they matter to you. But it's also listening to him and having him um, share with you the things that are on his heart. And I think probably the best illustration I have of this is, um, I remember it was take your daughter to work day. And this was when I, for a short period of time, I was working as a buyer of a biomedical research institute in San Francisco. And um, on the Take Your Daughter to Work Day, um, one of the displays they had is where they had all of these uh, microscopes set up. And they were this um, uh, research institute, it's called Gladstone Institutes. Um, and it was started by um, a man who both Lester and I uh, uh, fondly refer to as dad and, uh, and his wife as mom. So they're like a mom and a pop, really the only grandparents our kids have ever known. And he founded this institute, and they, you know, they do um, uh, heart disease, they uh, re, uh, uh, research for AIDS and HIV and immunological uh, uh, 
issues. They do genetic research and all, just it, fascinating stuff that, that they do. But um, uh, when we t- did Take Your Daughter to Work Day, there were in these Petri dishes these um, undefined cells. And then as you're looking at the mi- through the microscope, you, they would inject a, heart, a cell from a heart. And these were, um, they were doing this all from um, mice. And they, as they injected the, the heart cell, you could see that one little cell in all of these nondescript cells, just kind of just there in a Petri dish. And then as you waited, you could see the heart cell begin to beat. Where you could hear the... I'm trying to get the... Works so much better on the big mic. You could hear the, You could see it kind of go boom, 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 all by itself. And then far over on the petri dish, another cell would just begin to beat in the same rhythm, and slowly begin to migrate its way towards that heart cell. And soon, other cells picked it up. Not all of them, but other cells begin to pick it up until they all were beating in rhythm and they clumped together. It was fascinating to watch how you and I are designed and how science is discovering how God created us so that they might begin to help repair our own bodies. And through that illustration, I began to realize, wow, that's what it's like to beat with the heartbeat of God. Where you, you um, in the morning you wake up and you say, God, what were you thinking about me before I woke up? Now all of a sudden you can hear, boom, 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 boom. God's heart, how He delights in you. How you're His favored daughter. He loves you. How you're His favorite son. He loves you. And you begin to beat with that Word of God that He he speaks into your heart. That's the listening part of prayer. Where your heart begins to care about the things that He cares about. Where you carry what He thinks about you through the day. As opposed to all the lies that the enemy and and people around us spew out on us. So, that is the first thing about pursuing a friendship with God. The second thing about prayer is it's inviting the presence of God to change the atmosphere. When Jesus said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done... He was showing us how God's heart is that what is happening in heaven would actually happen here on earth as well. Now think about it. Heaven is wherever God is. You don't have heaven without God because heaven is all about God's presence. Wherever the presence of God is, there is heaven. That's why when Jesus said, that, um, when when um, he would come to people, he said, the kingdom is near you. <laughs> In other words, I'm the king, I'm the kingdom, and I've just come near you. So therefore, the kingdom has come near you. Heaven has come near you. Now you think about it. In heaven, no sickness. In heaven, no disease. In heaven, there's no um, stupid mistakes. This is brilliant wisdom in heaven, on down the line, right? Heaven is, and then we, we have that picture of perfection. And that's because that's where God's presence is. So wherever the presence of God is, there is undiluted joy. There is perfect love. There is an overflowing of peace. There is healing, etc., So when I say that prayer is inviting the presence of God to change the atmosphere, it's saying, um, Lord, would you come and would you just pour out your presence on my friend who is um, really wrestling with the decision he needs to make. And I just pray you would bless him with your presence and, and all the wisdom that he needs. Now you have just released heaven towards that individual. Um, that's what praying for someone else is. And that is what I mean by releasing the presence of God. And the presence of God is so important. That's why Moses said, when you know he was about ready to go into the promised land, and God said to him, hey Moses, 
I, I am about to take you over into the promised land. The, the land that the Israel has been waiting for over 400 years, held in captivity. I promised it a long time ago, four centuries ago. I promised it to Abraham. And now it's coming to pass. After all these years of slavery, I've just delivered you out of Egypt. You're about to take them over into the promised land. Your, your dream is about to come true. Everything that you've pursued and wanted to accomplish is about to happen. And I'm going to send an angel to go before you. This angel will clear away and you'll be good to go. But I, I won't be going with you. Moses put the brakes on. Er, no way. God, if your presence doesn't go with us, I don't want to go. I don't want to be a part of anything where you are not there. That's how valuable it was to Moses. And that's why King David said, Lord, a day in your presence is better than a thousand nights of revelry out with the wicked. That's why you've come this morning. Because you love the worship. You love the presence of God that you feel in this place when we are together. You too recognize there's something about being with God's people in the place of worship and, and the message and people praying and the fellowship that you say, oh, that's so good. You're recognizing the presence of God that is coming through the worship, through the word, and through the people that are around you. Third thing, we pray for ourselves, others, and the nations. In 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4, it says this, First of all then, I urge that entreaties and prayers, petitions and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men, for kings and all who are in authority, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all to be saved, and come to the knowledge of the truth. There's a lot of um, words in here that Paul uses to describe prayer. The, let's, let's take them apart uh, one by one. The word entreaty that he uses. It's a similar word. Some of your translations may use supplication. The idea here is that story of Jesus that he told in Luke 18 of the widow. Do you remember how the widow came before the unrighteous judge. The judge did not want to rule in her favor. Every day she came, keeps coming back and saying, Oh judge, I need you to rule in my favor. You know, the next day, Oh judge, I need you to rule in my favor. Next day, Oh judge. <laughs> you know, and, the, and Jesus, Jesus in telling the story says, The judge finally said, All right already. You know, this woman's going to wear me out. So I'm going to rule in her favor. So that was the idea of this supplication. It's this constantly coming back and coming back and coming back. And it's not that God is reluctant. It's that it builds something in you and me of tenacity and perseverance that you and I need that is, that is part of the building block of our faith. And I think of that verse that Jesus said um, uh, uh, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door shall be open to you. And many of you know in the original language, it's ask and keep asking, seek and keep seeking, knock and keep knocking and the door will be open to you. So that is this idea of supplication where you keep coming back to God again and again and again and again until you see um, that thing that you believe that you're that God has promised you to come to pass, or that thing that God has put on your heart until it's come to pass. You just don't give up. Now, the next word is just prayer, and that's the one that's so common to many of us, and that simply means to ask or to hope for something to take place. So I won't take any time because most of us understand that's the typical prayer that you and I are very familiar with, where we come, we ask for things, we say thank you, and um, there's things that we're hoping for. But the third one I really want to focus in on is petitions. And this is a word that is linked to um, the root word, which is to attain. And in this, it has an idea that you press and hold on to something until the breakthrough has happened. For example you may have a promise that God has spoken to you from the Word. 
Now, by the way, I mentioned earlier that the Bible is one of the ways that God speaks to us. And in my devotional Bible, I went to the back where there was a blank page. And when I was trying to learn all of the different promises that God was speaking, as I went through the Bible, I would record it on this back page. So it was an easy reference for me. Mind you, this is the day be- days before Google, all right? <laughs> and I had an entire couple of pages that were filled with all of God's promises. I wrote out the scripture and where it was found. And then I was able to say, God, you promised that the descendants of the righteous will never be begging bread. And I declare in the name of Jesus, and I will hold on that this will be not a lack, but a provision of your hand. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, that always having all sufficiency in everything. Lord, I don't see that all sufficiency. You promised. And I, you know, it's just like you're, you're, you're bold. Now you might ask, well, Ron, where do you get the audacity to be so bold? Jesus. Hebrews chapter 4, it says, because of what Jesus did on the cross, we now have a favored position. And it says, to boldly approach the throne of grace where you might find help in time of need. So you see, our prayers, my prayers, your prayers, they are not the how we earn favor. It's how we walk in favor. We we don't pray to be good. We don't pray in order to be righteous. You are already good and you are already righteous. I declare that word over you. That's what Jesus has said about you. You're already there. God's favor is already on you. That's a mind bender for many of us. That's a hard thing. There's times, there's days when I struggle still to even believe that because the enemy is relentless with our minds. Oh, you don't deserve favor because you did X, Y, and Z. Hey, you know what? That's all under the blood of Jesus. The only reason I have any favor at all is because God freely gave it to me. It's called grace. So shut up and go back to hell, Satan. (laughs) Right? It has nothing to do with you and me. So you walk in that position of favor. So because you are already a favored son or daughter, you can boldly approach the throne and you can begin to contend and to pray like like Paul um, addresses us in 1 Timothy. And we do this because we want to change not only ourselves, but we want to see God's breakthrough in other people as well as our nation. Um. There's more in here, but I'm just going to put a pause on this um, to say, yeah, I think I can let the other stuff go. I've got other great notes in there, really good stuff, if I don't say so myself. (laughs) But um, I want to say this, so often we have opportunities to pray um, for we bring our own needs in the privacy of our own homes, and that is right. And that is good, and that's what we should do. Just like it's right that, like my little daughter would hold on to my wife's face and say, Mommy, let's talk. There's a place where we come in that kind of simplicity with God. Just saying, God, I just want to know your heart. And I want you to know my heart, too. I really struggle with this, or it really hurt me when that happened. And I ask you to take that hurt out of my heart, you know, all that kind of stuff. But then there's also a growing pathway of prayer that I've illustrated for you through Paul's word to Timothy. But what I want to end with is we are also called to pray for our nation. This word out of Timothy said um, that we're to do these things, we're to pray for all people and for everyone in authority so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life. I don't know about you, but whenever I go to the news, I'm kind of, pers- I, I have this discernment. I, I'm just really good about these kinds of things. I know it's a little subtle, but I think there's a real hatred going on in our nation. I just, it's just kind of me. I'm just kind of cluing in early on that. I don't know, you know, not everybody can see that. <laughs> there's so much hatred going on. There's so much lack of peace going on, right? 
I wonder if God is calling us as his people to pray for our nation. And I believe he is. This Friday, we have an opportunity to join with other believers all across our nation. Get this, it's called Tent America. And in Tent America, they're in every capital of our nation. So all 50 states have all 50 capitals. I won't tell you all 50 capitals because I'm not smarter than a third grader. (laughs) Every capital is going to have a tent, outdoor tent, where people are just gathered to worship and pray. They're blessing our nation. They They aren't taking political sides. There's no other agenda than just to say, Jesus, we love you. You're awesome, and we need you in our nation now more than ever. Bring your peace. And, we, and that's what this is all about. Now, not only in every capital, but there are tents that are popping up in, every, in counties all across America as well. And we are no different. Contra Costa County is going to have a tent. There's 23 tents all across California. 23 counties are going to have a tent of worship and prayer for over 50 hours from Thursday through to Saturday. And our own worship leader and our worship team are going to be there this Friday from 7 to 9 p.m. at Atlantic Plaza in Pittsburgh. I ask you to come along. Come and be a part of this worship and prayer. That we, and it's going to be um, simulcast or uh, streamed. So we'll be able to see what's happening in, in Washington, D.C. We'll be able to see what's happening in Oregon and all over the place. All at the same time, worshiping Jesus. Come and be a part of it. Come and be part of those who will make a difference in our nation. Well, not only do we need to go and pray, but we can do prayer right here. And I want to just ask uh, Gina if she would come up, uh, Jamie if she would come up, and Mary, ba- oh, Mary is here, yes, if you all would come up. I've asked them if they would take two minutes each and just briefly share with us about some of the ministries that, is, that, that are going on about prayer here, one, so that you can be aware of it, two, you could take advantage of it, and three, you could partner with us if that's what God is putting on your heart. So, um, Mary, let's start with you and talk to us about the prayer chain. Okay. So, um, I spoke last hour, too, and it, I think it was just too um, organized. <laughs> so, God is simple, and he loves us. And I want to talk about, it's called the Confidential Prayer Chain, or prayer network. It's been going on for years in our church. I've been a part of it since 2002. And what it is, is a safe secure, confidential place, if there's something on your heart and you want us to lift you up in prayer, or your loved ones, or your kids, or court, or work, or whatever, it's a safe place to just go on your email and send your request to prayer at claytoncc.com. And there's a group of, I think, 12 or 13 of us right now, and I like to call the prayer chain because we're we're like, we're linked together, us 12. You know how how God talks about a three-stranded cord is strong? Well, we're 12 stranded chain, and, um, and we will lift you up in confidence. We will never come up to you and say, how's your son doing? Never, mm. never. This is just in confidence. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I just want to put it, that out there. Sometimes we have a lot of requests. Sometimes we don't. So please, if you want us to pray for you, we would love to be on our knees awesome. and intercede for nice. that. Now, if you would like to be a part of that. If you don't want to come up front and pray, but man, you're on your knees at home and you pray for your kids and you pray for your friends or whatever, we want to welcome you to join our team and, um, and lift up our body together. So, uh, and did I say the address? Oh yeah, so Katie is in the process of putting on a commitment sheet that you have to just kind of read what you're committing to and the confidence and you can sign it on that. I don't think it's on prayer at claytoncc.com yet, but I have some copies or you can contact me And we would love to welcome you in that. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Mary. Come on up, Gina. Tell us about what you do. So um, Jamie here introduced uh, uh, a book um, that someone had written called The Prayer Shield. And read it, kind of went through it and stuff. But um, God put it on my heart to make it more for our leaders, not just the pastors. And so for, gosh, it's almost been four years now. 
Um, there's been a team of people, and you probably, it, what, it's not exclusive, it's just like, a, I feel like we're stealth bombers against the evil one. Um, and thank God there's been enough people on the team that's covered every day of the week. So if you are a pastor, if you are a staff member, if you are an elder, you lead some ministries, um, you have been prayed for every single day that's by awesome. this team. And um, so we just want you to know about it. If that's on your heart, if you can lift up, um, we commit to one day where you would pray for the leaders and they would be listed out, you know, Pastor Sean. So are they right. praying all day long? No, oh. they don't pray all day long. <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, and you don't need a commitment. No. Um, but if you guys pray at home, <laughs> I, yeah. like to, I like to say that. If you pray, ever pray at home, um, you would commit to praying on one day of the week specifically yeah. for the leaders. Yeah. Um, I say you can go as deep as you want if the Holy Spirit leads you. Mm -hmm. But really, if you're praying for each of the leaders, pray for our congregation. And, of course, we want to pray for the, our uh, city, state, and government leaders generally. Mm -hmm. That um, I would say a half hour. But if that's on your heart to want to be an intercessor for those, that type of thing, definitely come and join us. And if you're leading uh, something here, just know that people are praying for you. They're praying for you, your marriages, Good. your families, Good. and your children, and that what you do in this church is really valuable. So thank you. Thank you, Gina. Wonderful. And Jamie. Yeah. All right. Well, I get to talk about two things, so I get four minutes. No, just <laughs> twice as fast. Oh, twice as fast. All right, I'll try. <laughs> Okay, so we have great opportunities at our church to pray in multiple ways. You've seen two ways already, um, ways that we would call intercession, where you are praying. It's between you and the Lord, right? And then you see sometimes we have prayer offered up front. Well, some people don't feel comfortable praying up front in front of people. That's why we like to offer multiple different ways. So you have an opportunity to pray up front too. If you like to do that. And if that is on your heart, if you like to pray for people, come and talk to me or Pastor Ron or Chris Boone, mm. and we will help get you set up. And we have ways to help train you and equip you. One of those ways is our Kingdom Encounters Prayer Breakfast. It's once a month on a Saturday morning, and we feed you. And we don't just feed you food for your physical body, but we feed you spiritual food, too. That's so good. Right? You will hear the word of God, and you will hear uh, stuff similar to what Pastor Ron is preaching on today about the importance of prayer and what that looks like. We might be talking about forgiveness or um, healing our soul and our minds and our hearts. In those breakfasts, we like to train you, equip you, and then activate you because we put all of this into action, right? Whatever we're passionate about, we need to put into action. That's how we share the love of Christ. And truly, that's what prayer is doing when we're praying for our brothers and sisters. We're sharing the love of Christ with others. And so once a month, we have these breakfasts. And you're welcome to come, even if you don't want to be a part of the prayer shield or the prayer chain, or if you don't want to pray up front. If you just want to grow deeper with the Lord and work on your relationship with him, come and join us. There's no commitment. You don't have to sign up. You don't have to be a regular person. We just want you to come because we also feel it's important to be family and That's to good. build one another up and encourage each other. We share testimony and we just talk about life and what God is doing. It's so important that we come together to support each other. That's part of prayer as well. One other thing we offer in prayer is called prayer appointments. That is something that Chris Boone and I have been doing for about two years now. And uh, Elaine, would you put that up on the screen? We sang a song this morning that really described what a prayer appointment is. And I'll tell you, it's an intentional time of coming together before the Lord and allowing him to do work in your life. And basically, there is no shadow that he will not light up. There is no mountain that he won't climb up to get to you. There is no wall that he won't kick down and no lie that he will not tear down, you guys. He desires to do that. Mm. And so for a prayer appointment, we come together in the presence of the Lord and we ask him to shine his light on any area of your life where you might be feeling that you're struggling or that there's darkness or that you just feel stuck or you feel sad. Any area where you think it's not coming into alignment with what God says is true, we will sit there with you and we just ask the Lord to come in and to work. 
And doing that, you can go on our website, to the Clayton Community website. There's a prayer appointments button. And you click on that, and it emails us, and it's private and confidential. No one receives it, not even our pastors. Nope. Just Chris and I receive it. We have you fill out a form that has a lot of questions. And there's a reason behind getting all those questions down. We want to dig through deep, deep layers, because this is an intentional time of coming before the Lord. And I'll tell you what, he does light up everything mm. that you are willing to allow him to light up. And you will experience the freedom and the love and the comfort and the joy and the wholeness that he has for you. Yeah. So as you can see this morning, we offer a lot from personal intercession to covering our church body and our leaders and our community and also praying for one another. Mm -hmm. And that's just the heart of the Father, and that's our heart, too. Freely we have received, and so freely we want to give back to Amen. you guys. Amen. There you go. Thank you so much, Jamie. Can you give a hand for all these ladies? As we go, I just want to draw your attention to the back of your bulletin. Um, not the bulletin, the, the uh, sermon outline. And it's saying, what is God saying to me? As we, we are five years from now, we won't be where we are today in prayer. We will, be, we will have grown because we are intentionally growing in this. And we invite you to grow along with us. And one of the ways to do that is I just invite you to consider these three prayers um, to take you deeper in your prayer life. And the first one is, God, show me what makes your heart happy. And the second one, if you dare, <laughs> what breaks your heart? And let God begin to show you what he's happy about and what kind of make, what makes him sad. The second, that's so that you can begin to get in touch with the heart of your God. The second one is, God, show me where you are working and use me in your story. This is a beautiful prayer just for you to begin to have your eyes open to see all the places that God is at work. By the way, this is what Jesus did. He would go away to a lonely place. He would pray to the Father. And he'd, say, he'd see what the Father was doing. And he'd hear what the Father was saying. And then he would go live that out in that day. And then the third thing is, God, reveal yourself through me to those around me. Well, I hope this series on prayer, um, uh, sorry, the series on values has been, um, uh, our values has been helpful to you. Certainly it's not all of them, but those were eight of our values. Um, and I would be remiss if I didn't at least offer prayer for you as we close. So we're going to turn the house lights off. Um, there's going to be some music from the back that Mick's going to play. Some of you may be good, and that's okay. Um, can I ask the prayer uh, leaders to come on up and just get in place for, for people to receive prayer? You can stand off on, yeah, wherever. Um, uh, I just want to say I hope you have a wonderful week. Don't forget to sign up for the small groups. And um, know that the whole purpose of this prayer, I hope you could feel the heart of it, was so that you would get in touch with your Papa God. So I, I just close this with this. Lord Jesus, thank you for your kindness. And Lord, as we would leave here today, um, we just want to leave behind an atmosphere where people who need more prayer right now can receive it from these trusted sisters Lord, I believe you are healing. I believe you are setting the captives free. I believe you're doing such a good work in, for all of us. And we thank you for the truth that anything of lasting value begins in the place of prayer. So would you, Holy Spirit, you're the one who leads us. Would you lead us in the next steps each of us are to take in prayer so that we all might be growing together in, ex in experiencing and applying this value, this gift of prayer that you have given to us to be in communication with you, our Heavenly Father. To the glory and honor of Jesus, amen. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful week.